So imagine a paint job with higher gloss, resistant to scratches, and one that's easier to keep clean. I'm finally ready to apply the ceramic coating to my 2018 Honda Goldwing. And by the way, I've never done this before. So you're going to get to watch me apply my very first and maybe my last ceramic coating. Uh, so let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage Ultimate Motorcycle Detailing Series where I'm covering the four steps that I'm using to apply a ceramic coating to the paint on my motorcycle. Now in this video, I'm going to finally get to apply the ceramic coating to my bike. But before I do, I'm going to share some information about ceramic coatings that you might not hear anywhere else on YouTube. Because a ceramic coating is not for everyone. And later in this video, I'm going to tell you why. So make sure you watch the entire video before you make the decision to do this on one of your vehicles. I've already covered the first three steps in previous videos, to which I will put links in the description of this video. So if you're considering a ceramic or graphene coating on your motorcycle or any vehicle, make sure you watch those videos first. I'm working on my 2018 Honda Goldwing, which happens to have a pearl white metallic paint. Nevertheless, the techniques, tools, and products that I use in this video will work with any brand of motorcycle or any vehicle for that matter, as long as the motorcycle or vehicle has a glossy clear coat finish. If your motorcycle has a matte finish, please do not attempt these techniques. You probably are going to need to do some more research on how to care for uh, and protect a matte finish. Honestly, I haven't been able to find a whole lot of information on the topic. If you're familiar with that, put it in the comments down below. Now, regardless of what motorcycle you ride or what type of paint that motorcycle has on it, as long as you're passionate about motorcycles, please take a second to click that subscribe button down below and that little notification bell, so that way YouTube will remind you when we come out with new videos. Once again, a quick disclaimer, I'm not a detailing professional. I'm just a hobbyist who has a passion for keeping my motorcycles and cars looking their best. I've tried to adopt the products and the methods and the techniques of some reputable auto detailing professionals that I've watched on YouTube extensively. And I also get a lot of information from my brother, who is obsessive about maintaining his 2001 C5 Corvette has years experience on this subject. If this is a subject that you're interested in, there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube regarding auto detailing. Also, this video is not sponsored. I purchased all of the products used in this video and in the previous detailing videos. However, I put links to all the products I used in, this, in the description of this video, so all you have to do is really sit back and relax and just enjoy the show. Now, even though this video is not sponsored, videos like this one would just simply not be possible without the support of those Honda Goldwing owners who have purchased my Goldwing maintenance video series. If you own a 2001 to current year model Goldwing, these videos can save you $1,000 per year or more in dealer labor charges. And that's why thousands of Goldwing owners in 23 different countries now are using my videos. I'll put links in the description of this video. Even though we've talked about the various forms of paint protection in a previous video, it might bear repeating. So before we rush into anything, let's first consider whether or not a ceramic coating is the right decision for you. When it comes to maintaining the finish on your motorcycle, you could opt for no protection at all. You could simply wash your motorcycle periodically and be done with it. A lot of guys do that. Or two, 
you could periodically apply some sort of carnauba wax, will typically last one to three months, gives a nice look. Or three, you could opt for some paint sealant, many of which are simply spray on, wipe off, and can offer several months of protection. In fact, I use Turtle Wax Ceramic Spray product on our 2020 Lexus, and I love it. It's easy to use, it delivers a really slick surface, and within the wax and sealant options, there are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of different products from which to choose. And a fourth option is some form of semi-permanent ceramic or graphene coating. Ceramic coatings, like the one I'm using on my motorcycle from Avalon King, come in these small glass bottles like this one, and inside there's a liquid resin with a high concentration of SiO2 or silicon dioxide, along with some solvent carriers. And when this resin is applied to your paint, it forms a semi-permanent bond to the clear coat, and the result is a surface that's two to three times harder than clear coat and highly resistant to chemicals, it offers superior UV protection, can resist scratches and swirl marks, and makes the paint easier to keep clean. Now, in very simplistic terms, you could sort of think of a ceramic coating like a very thin layer of clear glass on top of your paint. Graphene coatings are essentially the same with the addition of some carbon atoms added to the resin. Now, graphene coatings are relatively new on the market, but they claim to offer all the same benefits of a ceramic coating with some additional resistance to water spotting. In general, however, the application process for a graphene coating should be identical to a ceramic coating. That said, if you do choose to apply any ceramic or graphene coating to your vehicle, you should always follow the manufacturer's instructions over anything I tell you in this video. These products are evolving very rapidly, and the techniques for applying them could evolve as well. So why did I choose to go with a ceramic coating on my 2018 Goldwing? Well, a big part of the reason is because my brother has had a ceramic coating on his 2001 Corvette for many years, and he had a great experience with it. Honestly, if you looked at his C5 Corvette, you would never believe that that car is over 20 years old. I swear, it looks as good or better than it did the day he bought it new. He initially applied this CQ UK 3.0 from CarPro back in 2018. And recently, he went through the process of stripping off the old ceramic coating and reapplying a new coating using this Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King, which is the same one that I'm going to be using on my Goldwing. And by the way, if you're interested in this product, I've recently been accepted into their ambassador program, and I have a special link in the description of this video. So if you're going to purchase this product and you want to support this channel, you could order using that link. I would like to clarify that my brother was in no way dissatisfied with the CK, CQ UK 3.0 product. It held up for four years on his Corvette, but having used both products, he does claim that the Armor Shield 9 is a bit more forgiving in the application process. Both great products, though. Now you're getting ready to get some information that you won't find on many, if any, YouTube channels. And while I'm completely enthusiastic about ceramic coatings and the protection they can offer, I fully understand the potential downside to ceramic coatings and some outstanding questions that I still have. The first downside, if you've watched my previous videos, is pretty obvious. It's the time and effort required to prepare your paint for the application of the product. I mean, the clear coat on your vehicle needs to be as perfect as possible before you apply the ceramic coating, because any scratches or swirl marks in the clear coat need to be removed. Otherwise, you're just going to be sealing in the scratches with a semi-permanent coating. And correcting the paint requires the use of a random orbital polisher, pads, compounds, and polishes, 
which could end up costing $150 to $200 or more. These products could all be used for many other tasks, such as correcting scratches on your other vehicles or further maintenance on your motorcycle. But it is an expense. And before the machine polishing can take place, the paint needs to be free from contaminants, which can only be removed by using a clay bar on the surface. Now, this is not expensive or overly time-consuming, but it is an additional step. And once you've gone through the process of preparing your motorcycle to accept a ceramic coating, you're going to understand why these professional shops charge $1,000 to $2,000 to ceramic coat a motorcycle. It's a lot of work. Before the ceramic coating can be applied, any residue from the compounds and polishes used during the polishing process must also be removed from the surface using an isopropyl alcohol solution, or IPA. Now, you can purchase these IPA products pre-mixed, or you can mix up your own using isopropyl alcohol and distilled water. I'll put links to some popular IPA products in the description of the video. I'll also put a link to a more affordable random orbital polisher that you can purchase on Amazon. Ceramic coatings are claimed to provide one to five years of protection, depending on the product and the conditions. Some even claim to last up to seven years. But then what? How do you remove a semi-permanent coating from your clear coat? This is a topic that is rarely, if ever, discussed in depth. Now, if you typically only keep your vehicles two to four years before trading them in or selling them, it's really not a big deal. It just becomes the next guy's problem. Now, the only way I know that you can remove a ceramic coating is through machine polishing. You can't simply wash off a ceramic coating with chemicals. Now, you can do that with waxes and sealants. Even some paint sealants are difficult to remove completely without machine polishing. So if after three or four or five years, you wish to reapply a new ceramic coating like my brother just did, or whatever the latest, greatest coating is at that time, you're going to need to go through this entire polishing process again to remove the existing coating. Of course, you could just allow it to deteriorate over time and go back to using a wax or a sealant. Ceramic coating manufacturers claim that these coatings can be applied to other surfaces, such as glass or even plastics, that are not painted or clear coated. For example, the flat black plastic trim on my Goldwing. Now, I'm not planning to ceramic coat these surfaces because I'm not sure how you can really prep the surface. Also, how would it change the look of the matte finish? And if the ceramic coating degrades over time, will it begin to look splotchy? I don't know. Nobody talks about it. And if it did look splotchy, how would you remove it from the matte black finish? Because you can't machine polish it. So my thinking is, it's just better to avoid those areas altogether. And by the way, if you know any of the answers to these questions, please feel free to comment below. Some of you have a lot of experience with auto detailing. Ceramic coatings require a 24 to 48 hour curing time after they've been applied. This is another downside. That means your motorcycle should not be ridden for at least 24 to 48 hours after you apply the ceramic coating. Now, you want to make sure you check with the manufacturer of your particular product for details on their recommended curing times. But you don't want that surface to come in contact with any water or rain during the curing time. Now, in actuality, this coating will continue to cure for up to a week or longer after the application, but you can ride your bike after that initial 24 to 48 hour curing time. The last downside to a ceramic coating, in my opinion, it doesn't really apply to those of you that live in areas that have low humidity, but in North Texas, where I live, our relative humidity is typically in the 70 to 85% range. And ceramic coatings should not be applied when the humidity is above 60%. After I completed the polishing phase of the paint prep, I had to wait several days for the humidity levels in my garage to drop to a reasonable level so that I could apply the ceramic coating. 
Of course, if your garage is air conditioned or if you have a dehumidifier, this isn't an issue for you. Now, in spite of these concerns, the advantages of a ceramic coating for me outweigh my concerns. I'm looking forward to a paint that is easier to maintain, easier to keep clean, resists scratches and swirl marks. Okay, we've talked enough about ceramic coatings. Let's get to the garage. Okay, now I'm going to go over every square inch of this painted bike with an IPA solution. And we're going to get make sure there's no polish left anywhere on this bike. Now you might see it says super clean, but it, it really is not super clean. It is an IPA solution. And this is used to get any remnants of polish off the bike that might still be on the bike. I finally have the conditions that I need to apply the ceramic coat. It's about 7.45 at night here in Dallas, Fort Worth. I came out to the garage and I looked at the, uh, I think, what's it called, a hygrometer? I'm not sure. It's the uh, thing that measures humidity and it shows that I'm just around 50%. Now I need to be under 60% to apply this ceramic coating to my 2018 Goldwing. So I just went ahead and decided to come out here while I could, while I know the humidity level is correct, and go ahead and do it. And the temperature is around probably 86, 87 degrees. It's probably a little warm to do this. I think they recommend under 80 degrees, but I'm going to go ahead and take a shot at it anyway. I've got my Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King and I'm going to open up the box show you what comes inside and we're going to get started on this project tonight. I uh, don't know how long it'll take but uh, I'm going to take you along for the ride. I'm just going to take off the top here. We're going to look inside and it's got a little uh, welcome thing here. A little uh, card that we can use for I'm not sure exactly what we use that for yet. I think it might be to tuck the cloth into this applicator. And then here is our bottle of ceramic coating, which is uh, inside this glass bottle. Very nice packaging, as you would expect. And then underneath this little piece here, we have a cloth, and this is the cloth I believe we're going to be using to level out the ceramic coating once we've applied it and it has flashed. They do give us a pair of uh, black natrile gloves to wear while we do the application. Good idea to wear those. And then we have a applicator block. It's kind of a foam block that we'll use to apply. And then we have the applicator uh, microfiber cloth. Now these can only be used one time because once you use these and that ceramic coating dries on here, it kind of dries really hard, almost like glass. So let's go ahead and get this put on the applicator block and we'll get started. They actually give you three of these applicator cloths, which is a really good thing because I'm sure I may need extras. That's nice. I wasn't aware of that. And I think what we're going to do, there's a soft part to this applicator pad, and we're just going to wrap this around like this, 
and there's a little slot, not sure if you can see that, there's a little slot in that foam. And I think what we do is we're going to take this card they gave us and just kind of shove that cloth inside that slot. And that will hold that microfiber cloth in place so it doesn't slip off that pad like that. And then we'll tighten it up over here and do the same thing on the other side to get it kind of lock that cloth in place. Now I'm going to start on the front fender and what we're going to do is we're just going to put some drops of that ceramic coating on here. I'm just going to hit this these surfaces with a little bit more IPA because this motorcycle has sat in my garage overnight and just in case any dust settled on the paint or just in case I missed a spot where there might be some uh, you know residual protectants or polishes on the surface it doesn't hurt to go over it just one more time and just make sure it's good and dry and clean before we put on this ceramic coating now we're going to apply this the goal is to apply put it on the applicator a few drops and then we're going to go um, this direction, overlap the uh, application. We'll be able to see it go on, I think. It might be a little harder to see on white than it would be on a darker color. And then we're going to go back the opposite direction in kind of a crisscross pattern just to make sure we get full coverage. And then the instructions say to let this set for about five minutes until it, uh, what they call, flashes. And what we should begin to see is kind of a looks like a little bit of a rainbow effect on the paint. And that means it's time for it to be what they call leveled. And that's where we go back with our softer cloth and we just kind of basically buff it out. Kind of like you would do a wax job when the wax job dries. Now what I'm going to do, like with most products, I'm going to shake this really well. And uh, by the way, you're seeing this the first time. This is the first time I've ever done a ceramic coating. So you are seeing it live. And there's a little tab we have to remove here. Kind of a cap. There we go. That little cap has to come up. And then we should be able to get a few drops. I'm just, I see it going on. I'm just putting a few drops on here and then I'm going to close that little cap. And now we can start applying this. And I'm just going to go back and forth. I'll go down the sides. And then I'm going to come across like this. Just want to make sure we get it fully covered on all the surface. And I'm going to come along here. I can already start to see that rainbow effect they're talking about. It's already starting to show up on the paint. Not sure if that's showing up on the camera or not. But you can kind of, uh, from here, you can kind of notice a little bit of a rainbow effect starting to take place. Okay, so I'm going to stop. I want to do this fender first. And then I'm going to just do a hyperlapse and have me uh, go around the rest of the bike. I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes. So while I'm letting that sit, I'm going to go do another section with the IPA. And then we'll come back and level this out. Now, as I suspected, it's almost impossible, for, I'm sure, for you to see this on the video camera with white paint. But there is sort of a, a, a rainbow haze effect on this. Uh, front fender where we applied that ceramic coating. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to buff it off using this black uh, kind of a softer microfiber cloth. So let's see if we can get this to level out. Uh, it's, it's very, very easy to... Man, is it slick. You can really feel how slick this surface is now.
I'll come back and check this again just to make sure that we don't have any additional flashing happening on this fender. But man, it feels super, super slippery right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's a noticeable difference compared to this. If I rub this uh, right here, it's sticky. I mean, you can stick to the plastic. If I rub it down here, it just glides right off. It's unbelievably slippery. So that part is impressive. Okay, let's go ahead and do the rest of the bike. Now that I've completed the ceramic coating, I can say that I'm very pleased with the initial result. The paint looks amazing, very glossy. The easiest part of the entire process was applying the ceramic coating. This Armor Shield 9 just glides on smoothly and easily. After the drying time, or after it flashes, it's very easy to level using the included soft microfiber uh, towel they include. The, super, uh, the surface has a super slick feel now. I'm very anxious to see how much easier the bike is to keep clean in the future, assuming that it will be easier. And I will update you in future videos as to the longer term experience with this ceramic coating and its performance. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button under the video. That helps with our YouTube rankings a lot. And if you plan to do your own ceramic coating, please let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget, if you're interested in using the Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King, I'll have links in the description of this video to their website. As always, if you want to further support this channel, and encourage more videos like this one in the future, check out that super thanks button underneath the video. And leave me a special comment and I'll make sure to reply. I look forward to seeing you on the next Cruise Man's Garage video.